in January of 2022, I got an email with the subject line, free diamond tip 3D printing nozzle. And the main body of that email also included the word Kickstarter. So obviously my skepticism needle just flew off the charts. However, the campaign was successful and products have actually been delivered. They didn't request from me a positive review or offer any money, force any opinions or anything like that at all. So I provided them my address and this showed up literally three days later. So let's take a look inside. Before we do that though, I do just want to let you know that calibration flower, divider PCBs and beautiful daylight, daybreak modded PCB LEDs are now available at effect3.co.uk. Also, if you want to know about more upcoming products and stuff like that, as I am working on new things, make sure you sign up for the newsletter to be notified when those things are available. The company behind this package was US Synthetic, and they're part of the Champion X company or group of companies whom deliver forward thinking innovations, unmatched global supply chain capability and market shaping solutions. I'm not quite sure what all that means, but basically it's not a small business. Got over 30, uh, 7,000 employees and lots of patents and locations. Did they really need a Kickstarter to launch a new product like this? Maybe not, but at least it was successful, I guess, and they did deliver on what they said they were going to. In the package I got, there are three diamond tip nozzles, a 0.4, 0.6 and 0.8, a lump of granite, a pot of small diamond granules, and some small kind of sample material discs made of brass, steel, tungsten, ruby, and you guessed it, diamond. Unlike natural diamond though, it's not transparent. It's kind of dark because this is a man-made polycrystalline diamond. I've said the word diamond like seven times in this video now, so I should probably explain what it's doing here and why it's exciting for 3D printing. In basic terms, there are essentially two main material properties that make a good nozzle. Thermal conductivity and hardness. Thermal conductivity is how quickly thermal energy moves through a material, so from one place to another. Good conductivity will keep the nozzle temperature even throughout the entire nozzle, whereas poor conductivity will result in uneven or lower temperature, especially when further away from the heater. The other property, hardness, is a material's resistance to scratching or indentation. So high hardness will make a nozzle more durable and resistant to filaments with hard additives, which are things like carbon fiber and actually glow in the dark filaments, whereas low hardness will mean the nozzle gets worn down pretty quickly by those same additives. Materials can only be scratched though by materials that are equal or harder than themselves. What makes diamond such an interesting material is that it actually has extremely high thermal conductivity and high hardness. This should mean, in theory, that you get even heating throughout the nozzle and you're able to print abrasives without the nozzle wearing out. So I've used the discs from this box to set up a basic thermal conductivity test by then heating one side with a soldering iron and measuring the other with a thermocouple. If I plot the change of temperature over time, we can identify differences in these different material samples. This is not a perfect scientific test by any means, as I had no control over the soldering iron heating. It's just set to a temperature and hope for the best. But it hopefully does demonstrate, at least in part, that the diamond was able to transfer the energy across that material body much faster, quicker, and was able to actually achieve a higher temperature as a result in that three minute window that the test was there. That's all very good though, but does it actually translate to better or faster prints? So to test this out, I used a single wall vase mode print, which looks like this, printed in PLA at increasing flow rates every four millimeters up. And I've tested with a 0.4 millimeter brass E3D nozzle, and of course the diamond nozzle as well. The same G-code settings, filament, etc., for both. So the only difference is the nozzle. Interestingly, we can see that the plain brass nozzle, the E3D one, seems to perform slightly better. The flow was consistent all the way to the top, while the diamond one seemed to hit a limit and started to get some artifacting. The body of both nozzles is brass, so that can't have been a problem, and the diamond tip should have been better. But this doesn't seem to be the case for PLA in this particular test. I think we need a bit more investigation on this and maybe brute foresight would be the best method to do that. And then we can get a better conclusion on flow rate with the diamond tip nozzle. So what about hardness? Well, using the same disc material samples again, we can demonstrate the different hardness of these materials. For this test, I'll attempt to scratch each material with the diamond and then vice versa. 
attempt to scratch the diamond with each material. So here are the results. The brass, steel, tungsten and ruby were all scratched easily by the diamond. When done the other way around, which by the way technically actually makes no difference, it looks like it's scratching but you can just wipe it away so I think it's just like distributing oils on the surface as everything just literally wipes away immediately. The diamond disc was essentially left completely unmarked. So we know it's hard, but ultimately we need to look at the print quality as this is what nozzles are for, otherwise what's the point? I printed about three quarters of a spool of Prusament polycarbonate carbon fiber, making the Voron stealth burner, CW2, ever modular carriage, and a few other bits and bobs here and there. For settings, I used basically the standard Prusa profile that's set up for this filament. The results look pretty good, but there is some random deposits occurring throughout the print, so I think perhaps there's some material catching on the nozzle as it moves around, and this is then being deposited at a later point in the print. It is worth noting, though, that although I damaged the living hell out of the brass part while cleaning the nozzle, you can see that the diamond tip on the nozzle still has the same polished finish as a basically totally brand new one. The key difference between the diamonds used in these nozzles and the clear, beautiful diamonds you get in jewellery is that they're obviously made differently. This polycrystalline diamond is industrially manufactured, whereas clear diamonds are naturally occurring. This does make them cheaper, but don't think they're cheap, they really aren't. In fact, they're about 100 US dollars per nozzle, so if you do get one, you really want to make sure that you're going to make the most out of it. So in conclusion then, I have very few doubts really actually at this point that the abrasion resistance on this nozzle is the real deal, like it's proper stuff, maybe as good as it could get. If you're running a print farm, churning out prints with abrasive filaments and your hardened steel nozzles are maybe not lasting very long, then this could be exactly what you're looking for. For the casual hobbyist though, that only prints abrasives occasionally, maybe this price is just a little bit too far. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. So that's it from me today. Don't forget to check out my website linked below where you'll find cool products, PCBs and stuff like that. And you can sign up for the newsletter if you'd like to know as soon as possible when I release something new. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.